Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how to do a blood draw with the use of a butterfly. Um, however, interesting fact, I was a phlebotomist before I became a registered nurse. So I am excited that I have created this video for you. I wanna share some details from the side of a phlebotomist to the side of a registered nurse. And if you are watching this video and you've come across it, I want you to actually comment below and share your story. And if you are watching this as a first timer phlebotomist or maybe even a new grad nurse, um, comment below. Um, however, before we get into the good stuff, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. Okay, so typical sites for a blood draw is always the AC, also known as antecubital, because this is less likely to get hemolyzed when you collect blood. Um, the other option is the back of the hand. You want to avoid at all costs trying to draw blood from the inner wrist area because there are nerves and tendons and you wanna avoid that um, site at all costs. In addition to drawing blood, you wanna take a look at your patient reasons or sides to avoid is if your patient has a fistula, so they're on dialysis, you wanna avoid that site at all costs. Um, if they have one on the left side, avoid it. If your patient has had breast cancer or a mastectomy or a sentinel lymph node um, removal, avoid that site. Or if they've had lymphedema or radiation or a stroke and they have a residual deficit on that site, you wanna avoid it or a broken arm, those are reasons to avoid it. Another thing to take into consideration is there's a thing called associated like phlebotomy anemia. And so you may hear it like some patients that are getting a lot of repetitive blood draws, they might say, oh my gosh, you're like drawing a lot of blood. Am I gonna like get anemic or something? So research does show there is phlebotomy associated anemia. So you wanna be conscious of your patients that are getting blood draws, especially for the inpatient patients. They have multiple teams. So they may have their primary team, like for medicine. And let's say in the morning they ordered a basic metabolic panel. So a green top tube and then cardiology came on and then they added, they ordered a magnesium level. So instead of having two separate draws, you can actually modify on um, the computer charting if you do computer charting and put it as a late add-on and just follow it up with a phone call to um, the lab so then that way they can make that adjustment and the patient doesn't have to get stuck okay so at this point you are going to want to gather all of your supplies things that you will need is you want to print out the labs for your specimens, you want to get your biohazard bag. You wanna collect all of your tubes that you're going to need. On the lab, there may be a reason that you need ice. So let's say you're gonna collect an arterial blood gas or a venous blood gas. You'll want to put some ice in a bag because that specimen, once you collect it, you gotta put it in ice. Um, you know, so that way it could be delivered um, properly. You also will need a pair of gloves, a tourniquet, alcohol prep if your patient is not allergic to it. And then for the gloves, you also wanna verify allergies. Um, if they have an allergy to latex, you wanna make sure that you have the right gloves for the patient. You have your alcohol prep, and then you also have your butterfly. It could be a 23 or a 25 gauge. And then you're gonna have your tube holder that you're gonna to connect to it, or you can have your vacutainer. Um, you have all of your tubes already. Then you'll have your Band-Aid and your two by two gauze. So prior to going into the patient's room, you wanna make sure you have all of your supplies with you. Once you go in, you introduce yourself to the patient and you do your hand hygiene. You also verify with the patient with two patient identifiers. So it'll be name and date of birth and you visually want to look at the patient's armband and also match that with the label to make sure that you have the right patient and the right date of birth. That way you're properly um, labeling the specimen when you do collect it, okay? So at this point, you are going to 
Um, look at the patient, make sure you've identified the correct site and you're gonna start to look for a vein. So you're gonna apply the tourniquet to the patient. So with the tourniquet in place, there has been this back and forth regarding if you have the patient make a fist. However, you can gently have the patient make a fist so then that way the veins are more prominent. However, you don't want them to make a tight clenched fist or you don't want them to repeatedly open and close their hands. And the reason for this is because it can produce um, in the lab specimen, like a pseudo hyperkalemia, which is a falsely elevated potassium level. That's the reason for it. However, when you are drawing the patient's blood and they do have a fist, at the moment of blood, when you access the patient's arm and you see the blood in the hub, then you have to prompt the patient to relax their hand for the remainder of the blood draw. I just wanted to emphasize that because I know there's some back and forth, but that's the reason for that madness is because it can um, produce a falsely elevated potassium level. So after you have identified the patient with two patient identifiers, you're gonna verify allergies as well. You're gonna do your hand hygiene. You're gonna put on your gloves. You're gonna apply the tourniquet. So I'm gonna go in the antecubital area. So I'm gonna go about two to three inches above the site. So I will apply it because now I'm going to locate my um, location for where I'm gonna stick the patient. So I have the tourniquet on. I don't have it on to where it's really tight, but I have it on enough to where I can still palpate an arterial artery if I need to. I wanna make sure that I advise the patient to make a slight fist with the emphasis of um, with the emphasis of them not making too tight of a fist. And I, all, and I wanna do this all within less than one minute. So I'm going to palpate the vein. I see that it's here. It's nice, has good flow back, and it has bounce back and it's spongy. So I'm gonna go in this location. So I'm gonna have them relax their arm and then I am going to clean the site. So I'm gonna clean the site in a vigorous motion side to side for about 30 seconds. So once I've done that, I am going to release the tourniquet, making sure that it was less than a minute. If it's greater than a minute, um, you want to wait two minutes because it can result in hemoconcentration. At this point, since the site is clean, I'm gonna prepare my supplies. So I have my butterfly, and I also have um, what I wanted to go over was, this is a 23 gauge. You can use a vacutainer or you can use a hub. If you use a hub, you don't have to move anything, remove anything from the butterfly. You just twist it on. However, my preference is I like veiny punchers. So I'm gonna remove the needle, put that in the sharps container and I'm going to attach the vacutainer. Okay, now that my site is clean, and dry. I'm also going to prepare the tape. So I have the tape here and then I'll pre-open this for my two, um, my two by two gauze. And I have all of my tubes that I'm gonna be using and one of them is gonna be a waste. The other two, I need my basic metabolic panel, my CBC. So now that I know that my site is clean, I'm going to reapply my tourniquet. Okay. And then I am going to have them make a fist. I'm going to take out the plastic sheath cover from here, okay? And then I am going to inject at the site. So I'm gonna hold down anchoring the um, vein and I'm gonna go inject. I'm gonna have them, I'm gonna prompt the patient to release their arm. And then I am going to put the vial inside there you go, so I have a waist, about three mils. I don't need to invert that. Green top tube for the order of draw. So once my green one is filled up, I'm gonna invert it about eight times, 180 degrees. Okay, and then I'm gonna go with the purple top tube. So once I have enough blood in the container, I'm gonna remove it and I'm going to invert the tube, okay? Then I'm going to um, release the tourniquet. I'm gonna put a gauze over. I'm gonna gently take out the needle per protocol. And then I'm going to push the retractor from here. 
and then I'm going to dispense this in the biohazard and then I'm going to apply a piece of tape and then I'm going to label my specimens per protocol. I'm going to put it in a biohazard bag and I'm going to send it to lab and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.